Number five, Nephilim. This one I can get behind for sure. How the pyramids were built still baffles me, and reading all about these things at least makes my brain relax for a second. The giants, the talls, the long neck people, the Nephilim. Again, never been a Bible guy myself, so no judgment if you say all this happened, but I'm just catching up on all this stuff. But in short, the Nephilim were like the offspring of angels and human women, according to Genesis 6, 1, 4, and Jude. The Nephilim are also mentioned in Numbers 13, 33, but it is likely that by this time in Israel's history, Nephilim was used as a term for a tall, intimidating peoples. It's plausible that the Nephilim were both half angels and half giants, making them absolutely huge and absolutely super strong. The Nephilim were the children of the sons of gods and daughters of men. And Christian scholars have theorized that the sons of gods were actually the these demonic fallen angels who reproduced with women. Being the offspring of partial angelic heredity, the Nephilim were considered mighty men who are of old the men of renown. The ancients. These people were huge, claiming that they were like five times the size of an average man. In the Hebrew Bible, a group of mysterious beings or people of unusually large size and length who lived both before and after the flood were called Nephilimus, sometimes translated to giants. Even the fallen ones from the Hebrew Nephil, meaning to fall. Seems like these people were writing about similar stuff, huh? Spooky. Number four, 200 million horsemen. This next one is not really a creature as much as it's the end of a lot of all of us. All this Armageddon stuff they were saying, that's some pretty strange stuff that's on its way. Book of Revelation stuff, you know? Quote, I saw as God wanted to show me the horses and the men on them. The men had pieces of iron on their chests. These were red like fire and blue like the sky and yellow like sulfur. The heads of the horses looked like the heads of lions. Fire and smoke and sulfur came out of their mouths. One third part of all man was killed by the fire and smoke and sulfur that came out of their mouths. Word for word, horsemen or ancient biblical technology? This sounds horrifying. Also, 200 million? That's a lot of flying flaming horses just trucking around the skies and sands like giant tanks firing fire out of their mouths and nose. As I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, and a great cloud with brightness around it, and fire flashing forth continually, and in the midst of the fire, as it were gleaming metal. And from the midst of all this came likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had a human likeness. Hmm. Okay. You put a Baja hoodie on me at a Dave Matthews concert and hear me saying all that stuff, you probably just think I'm some sci-fi stoner. Nope. This is riveting material, folks. I need to read this thing front to back. Apparently, this force was supposed to have taken out or is going to take out a third of the entire world's population. I know like three things that can do that. Pandemics, missiles, and floods. However, if men and horses showed up with lion heads breathing fire, it's safe to say it's game over. Number three, the Leviathan. Okay, at first I was like, oh, that's a roller coaster at Canada's Wonderland. No, 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 this vicious monster was actually modeled after this vicious monster. The Leviathan, the second of the great monsters described in the book of Job. This Leviathan, Leviathan, is an absolute massive sea monster who's impervious to human weapons, breathes fire, and emits smoke from his nostrils. Uh, yeah, so this is a Zelda boss for sure. The Leviathan is probably related to another ancient monster called Lotan, a seven-headed giant serpent who represents primeval chaos, as with pretty much every other biblical creature does. Hey, these things aren't meant to be cute and fuzzy. There's some less exciting theories that insist the Leviathan is just a dramatic interpretation of a crocodile or anaconda or maybe a plesiosaur resembling something like the Loch Ness Monster. But that doesn't explain the breathing fire thing or the size. Was this giant sea snake a water dragon? Because apparently it's like 300 miles long. Yeah, terrifying. Scary thing now is many different religions and cultures have their own version of the Leviathan. Tiamat, Hydra, Jormungandr. Maybe this thing was just hunted into extinction. I don't know. What do you think? Number two, Archangel Michael. It is said that the angels are not humans, but creatures made from God's creation. I've also seen what the Bible describes angels looking like, and it's not handsome people with wings. Apparently, a lot of these things, people really couldn't even describe what they were seeing in front of them. But we'll get to what these things look like in a minute. Of those creatures, Satan, aka Lucifer, is one. The one. However, here is even one creature that Satan fears more than any creature, and that's fellow Archangel Michael or Saint Michael. Some say they're brothers, some say they were on the same team for a bit. This is some good stuff, people. Quote, now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. 
but he was defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Revelation 12, 7, 9. Okay, so hold on. He and them are all down here with us? That's terrifying. Apparently Michael led that army, that one, so whatever scares Satan, scares the hell out of me as well. Also, all these pictures and statues of him and like window panes are all of him like wielding a giant sword made of light, just stepping on Satan's back as a hero. That's pretty intimidating, not gonna lie. And coming in at the number one spot, Ophanim. Okay, so what angels actually looked like, apparently was like giant geometrical feathers with eyes and a consciousness. Some had horns, some had hooves, lots of golden metal colors. This next thing doesn't even make sense to my brain. I feel like this is an ant hill trying to understand an iPhone. Quote, as I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature with its four faces. This was the appearance and structure of the wheels. They sparked like topaz and all four looked alike. Each appeared to be made like a wheel, intersecting a wheel. As they moved, they would go in any one of the four directions the creatures were faced. The wheels did not change direction as the creatures went. Their rims were high and awesome, and all four rims were full of eyes all around. Ezekiel 1, 15, 18. Uh, first off, is this thing even a creature? Yeah, everything I see here is an alien. Is this just us trying to process some sort of like energy being with eyes? Because if I saw Lucifer that looks like the hunk on the Netflix show, and then I saw this thing? One of the Dead Sea Scrolls interprets them as angels. Late sections of the Book of Enoch interprets them as class of celestial beings who don't sleep and guard the throne of God. Whatever these thing or things are, it sounds and looks absolutely horrifying. How could you paint that on a ceiling? I would just give up and paint wings in a halo as well. For real though, like that is a spaceship of some sort, isn't it? I mean, I understand the times, maybe the science wasn't there, but this thing is straight out of a sci-fi novel. Number five, the behemoth. You wanted five more creatures and I wanted an excuse to keep reading this thing. This book is terrifying. Speaking of, did you know that there's a herbivore creature plated in spikes and armor with a tail the size of an oak tree? Head like a lion swallowing up rivers just roaming around back then? Yeah, apparently. The behemoth. This goliath of a beast was one of the first talked about. Not the first beast, that's a completely different thing. Also terrifying. The behemoth. God's secret weapon, and apparently the first thing he created. Hadn't made us in his image yet, so uh, this hippo tank Elder Scrolls boss was what God went with. One of the most popular and revered creatures in the Bible, quote, Behold now, behemoth, which I made with thee. He eateth grass like an ox, he moveth his tail like a cedar, his bones are as strong as pieces of brass, his bones are like bars of iron. Yeah, this is definitely a dinosaur, right? Right? Scholars seem to think that the behemoth is an aggressive exaggeration of a large hippopotamus or rhinoceros. Opening up its mouth and swallowing a river could literally mean it's just an animal thirsty. In 2003, French scientists working in Pakistan claimed to have discovered an extinct species of rhinoceros called a Baluk ethereum, which was much larger, much scarier, and matched the physical description given in the book of Job. Yeah, that's terrifying stuff. Number four, cherubim. These cute flying baby angels we see on soap ads and bottles are a lot scarier and much more sinister than the blonde cupids we're used to seeing. The cherubs, or cherubim, are God's throne bearers and appear over 90 times in the Bible. The Hebrew text says cherubim is a celestial winged being who represents God's spirit on earth and symbolizes the worship of God. In Ezekiel, cherubim are described as angelic creatures with two sets of wings and four faces Faces. Lion, ox, human, and eagle. Okay, this is getting scarier and scarier. The four faces of the cherubim apparently represent the four domains of God's rule. The lion represents wild animals, man represents humanity, ox represents domestic animals, and the eagle represents birds. Aren't those all wild animals? I don't know. The cherubim appear in several texts of the Bible, including Genesis, Ezekiel, Kings, and Revelation. Yeah, so lots of people were seeing these things, and they all kind of sound somewhat the same. They all oddly say four faces, like every which way they turned, they could see a face. Some say, quote, they move quickly, using a wheel within a wheel, and their wings cover their body. Question, what's with all the wheels? People just like looking up into the sky all day must have had like severe floaters in their eyes because a wheel and a cute baby angel 
thing look completely different, no? A conjoined wingspan of the four cherubim are described as forming a divine chariot, the so-called mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. Two cherubim make the Ark and form a space through which Yahweh would appear, in Ezekiel's visions. The status of the cherubim are a sort of vehicle for Yahweh in the book of Samuel. So in a sense, they're kind of God's messengers, you know, bringing things up and down from him and to him, including him. Gotcha. A vehicle. Yeah, a vehicle. These images are terrifying. Yeah, and that's a mothership right there. That's a mothership, okay? Number three, unicorns. Hold up. This is scarier than the devil, right? Unicorns, really? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not the glittery ones with Farrah Fawcett hair like Hercules rides. More like a firstborn bull. Giant with a huge spear on its head. He has majesty, and his horns are the horns of a wild ox, and with them he shall gore the peoples, all of them, to the ends of the earth. Okay, yeah, that's really aggressive. I guess unicorns were a little bit scarier in the Bible, huh? A couple times these things are brought up too. It seems like a lot of people were seeing these. Yeah, I'd say a hunk in a suit on a television series is much less scary than a monster horse goring you to death. A ram is mentioned nine times in the Hebrew Bible. It's been translated to unicorn in the King James Version, and some translations as oryx, which was seen as a wild ox or rhinoceros. Quote, And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. Uh, yeah. Harsh. I mean, rhinos and other single-horned animals do do this. The Bible describes unicorns skipping like calves, traveling like bulls, and bleeding when they die. So they were real and very mortal, mostly believed to be an exaggeration though. Even Julius Caesar speaks of them. Quote, a little below the elephant in size and appearance, color, and shape of a bull, their strength and speed are extraordinary. They spare neither man nor wild beast. Were the ancients seeing like giant extinct rhinos? Were these flying evil narwhals just goring everyone to the end of the earth? Who knows? Sure sounds like it. Number two, locusts. Dude, I'm already afraid of the 12 inch flying praying mantises that do exist today. I can't imagine what these things looked like. Imagine a dog sized flying insect blocking out the sun because there's so many of them. Abaddon's locusts. These things were terrifying. The Bible has this to say about them. The fifth angel, apparently Abaddon, sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by smoke from the abyss, and out of the smoke, locusts came down upon the earth and were given power like that of scorpions. These demon bugs are well detailed in the Bible. They're described as, quote, horse-like creatures preparing for battle, adorned with crowns of gold above their head. Their face is like a man, but woman's hair with lion's teeth. Their body was locust-like, covered with iron breastplates. They have scorpion-like stings on their tails and razor-sharp claws, and the sound of their army will be like a million horses marching to the battlefield. Dude, that's a locust? Like a locust, the bug? No, 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 I don't think so. They will be freed by their master Abaddon from the bottomless pit and will torment all of the remaining sinners on earth for five months. Abaddon is described as the king of the army of locusts. Yeah, guy's really into bugs. Yeah, that's like some fear factor stuff right there. Just like a million bugs swarming you? No, no thanks. And coming in at number one, the dragon. Okay, there's some speculation here that this thing is the devil himself. The devil and the dragon. But also this thing apparently lives with the devil. I don't know, people were saying mixed things, but important thing is things weren't too literal back then and they were really spiritual. People were just trying to explain what they were seeing and feeling the best way they could. But yes, there was dragons. Yeah, we have the skeleton bones. Okay? And before you're picturing something fun like Dudley the Dragon or the ones that talk in The Hobbit who sit atop gold, no, no, no. Picture when it sneezes, it flashes light. Its eyes are like the red of dawn. Lightning leaps from its mouth. Flames of fire flash out. Smoke streams from its nostrils like steam from a pot heated over burning rushes. Its breath would kindle coals for flames shoot from its mouth. Yeah, this thing. Terrifying. Tremendous strength of Leviathan's neck strikes terror wherever it goes. Its flesh is hard and firm and cannot be penetrated. 
Job 41, 18, 23. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world was thrown down to the earth with all the angels. And I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leap from its mouth of the dragon, the beast and the false prophet. They are demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to the rulers of the world to gather them for battle against the Lord on that great judgment day of God the Almighty. He seized the dragon, that old serpent who is the devil, Satan, and bound him in chains for thousand years. The angel threw him into the bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked so Satan could not deceive the nations anymore until a thousand years were finished. Okay, yeah, that sounds like one giant amazing cutscene from a God of War game. Just chucking a dragon into a pit? Also, it's 2022. We better lock that thing back up. It's been more than a thousand years now, no? Quote, And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads were seven diadems. Okay, so it wears seven crowns. Maybe this thing is the devil. It's mentioned numerous times in the Bible. I've seen Game of Thrones. This thing is scary. Yeah. Number five on this list is the Panama 7. The following story happened only a few years ago and is a horrifying tale where seven people in Panama were found dead from a terrifying ritual. The BBC writes, 10 people have been arrested on suspicion of murder. The suspects and all victims were thought to belong to the Nagobi indigenous community. The grave was discovered after three villagers escaped and made their way to a local hospital last weekend, prosecutor Rafael Baloy said. They then alerted authorities about seven several families being held by an indigenous run sect. On Wednesday, police raided the community located in a jungle region in northwest Panama, some 250 kilometers from the capital Panama City. They were performing a ritual inside the structure. In that ritual, there were people being held against their will, being mistreated, said Mr. Belois. All of these rites were aimed at killing them if they didn't repent their sins. Inside the makeshift church, officers found a naked woman, machetes, knives, and a ritually sacrificed goat, Mr. Beloy said. The site was controlled by a religious sect called the New Light of God, believed to have been operating in the region for about three months. According to Mr. Beloy's, the kidnapping and torture started last Saturday after one of the members claimed to have received a message from God. The victims were then kidnapped from their homes, beaten, and so let me ask you guys, does that sound like something that God would tell you to do? Gather up a bunch of people, hold them against their will, and torture and kill them? To me, if any sort of entity was to tell you to do something like that, then that would be a demon or maybe the devil. Maybe that demonic entity would portray themselves as God or someone else, but I don't know what type of God would do something like this. To be completely honest, folks, I'm really not a religious person, so when I I hear something like this, I believe that this was the work of people who were extremely sick or misguided. But I can guarantee to them, they probably really felt like they were acting as the vessel for some higher being. I think in this instance though, they really did misjudge who that higher being was. This happened literally back in 2020 as well guys, so really not that long ago. My heart truly does go out to the people that were killed and to the families of those who were taken way too soon. Number four. Four on this list is The Devil Made Me Do It. This famous Ed and Lorraine case may be the best example of when someone tried to claim a demonic possession led to a crime. The case is centered around a young man named Orrin Cheyenne Johnson and the man that he murdered, a 40 year old named Alan Bono. Mental Floss says there was no question that Johnson killed Bono. However, his defense attorney, 33 year old Martin Minella, planned to argue that the 19 year old was not guilty by virtue of demonic demonic possession. Ahead of the trial, Minela pled his case through the media, giving interviews to major press outlets. The courts have dealt with the existence of God and now will be asked to deal with the existence of the demonic spirit, Minela told People. The day after Johnson was arrested, Lorraine Warren called the Brookfield police and blamed the killing on a demon. Johnson didn't actually say the devil made him do it, he only claimed that he didn't remember stabbing Bono. However, according to the the testimony of an officer on the scene, Johnson did tell the police, I think I hurt someone. Now this defense didn't actually work out for Johnson. He was inevitably convicted of first degree manslaughter and sentenced to 10 to 20 years in prison. However, he didn't serve nearly that many and was released after less than five years for being a really good prisoner. In my opinion, I kind of doubt that this guy was actually under the influence of a demonic possession and clearly the jury, they felt the same way. That 
being said though, he did seem pretty committed to that story during the trial, so I suppose it's something to consider. Number three on this list is Manuel Vela. Several years ago, Manuel Vela killed his pregnant girlfriend. It was a brutal murder and an incident which climaxed in a police chase where he was finally captured. Many people obviously asked the question, why? And the answer may shock you. The Mystique says Vela told the interviewers that the murder of his girlfriend and her child were part of a religious and political statement. He was possibly trying to enlighten the crowd of his opinion on pro-life ideologies. However, it seemed like his motivation behind the murders wasn't just politically backed. He went on to say how he is the Antichrist and the voices in his head guided him on what to do. Many of his analogies were akin to things that have happened in the history of Christianity. Christianity. Vela literally believed that he was the Antichrist, guys. That sounds like a pretty textbook example of a demonic possession to me. At this point, Vela's competency to stand trial was in question and a hearing needed to be done. Manuel never actually made it to the hearing though, because in January 2017, authorities found him dead in his cell. He had taken his own life. Number two on this list is the Son of Sam. The Son of Sam was a killer that caused one of the big biggest citywide police investigations ever. Ranker says New York City during the summer of 1976 was a hotbed of anger, frustration, and fear, and David Berkowitz, aka the son of Sam, didn't help the matter by killing six people and wounding seven others in the span of one year. After his arrest, Berkowitz told police that he was under the control of a demon named Harvey who inhabited his neighbor's dog and implored him to kill people. Once, during a three month break from his murder spree, Berkowitz wrote the New York Post to say, I am still here like a spirit roaming the night. Thirsty, hungry, seldom stopping to rest. After being incarcerated, Berkowitz received a sentence of 365 years in prison, by the way. He became a born again Christian, but he still believes that the devil and God are fighting for possession of his soul. No wonder this guy got 365 years. Not only did he kill six people, but to write to the Times saying that he He's still thirsty and hungry? Yeah. This is clearly a man that needs to be kept behind bars for literally ever. Once again, I want to stress the fact here that I'm not a religious man personally. When I hear a story like this, I believe that it's far more likely that the son of Sam was just truly mentally unstable and probably in need of some very serious help. He truly believed though that a demon had called upon him and was using his body as a vessel for evil. We may never know what truly caused him to do this, but at least he's lost up for good and won't be doing it again anytime soon. And finally, number one on this list is Michael Taylor. Several decades ago, Taylor was apparently possessed by a horrible demon and this time it really got the better of him. Ranker says in 1974, Michael Taylor was just a simple butcher living in Osset, England, who was suddenly overcome by an evil spirit. He had an exorcism performed on October 5th and 6th of 1974 and while it went okay, the priests weren't able to expel all of the demons. According to Bill Ellis, an authority on folklore and the occult and contemporary culture, in an all night ceremony, the exorcists believed that they had invoked and cast out at least 40 demons, including those of incest, bestiality, blasphemy, and lewdness. At the end, exhausted, they allowed Taylor to go home, although they felt that at least three demons, insanity, murder, and violence, were still left in him. So, you know, kind of the big three. After he returned home, Taylor immediately murdered his wife by ripping out her eyes and tongue and then tearing off most of the skin from her face, finally strangling their pet poodle. Police found Taylor standing in the street naked and covered in blood shouting, it is the blood of Satan. This is truly one of the most graphic crimes I've ever read about honestly. Like to think that this happened in real life is extremely scary. Also if he was possessed by some type of demon like what demon was this and how do we all avoid this? I feel like this is pretty pertinent information considering what Taylor ended up doing.